See, with all this talk about love, the question quickly arises, so what can we do in order to love as we should? I mean, if we could be given just a few quick and easy, simple steps to follow, well, the world would be a much better place, would it not? Well, here's the rub. We don't all love in the exact same way. We're unique individuals with different needs and different views of what it means to be loving. So what can we do? That is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, our faith is forced to run aground. See, we want our faith to be like a very good cup of coffee, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. That's a very good cup of coffee, by the way. <sighs> Just saying. So here we go. So what steps should we take? Now, I think I have found a very good illustration in, from the world of physical fitness concerning the problem with steps to be taken. Say, you want to go and get into good physical shape. So you go, you hire a trainer, and the two of you get together and discuss things and figure out that the best way for you to get in overall good shape is to run. And so your trainer sets up a series of steps for you to take in order for you to get into shape by running. In week one, say, you'll start by only running a quarter, an eighth of a mile rather, and you'll do this every other day of the week. In week two, you're going to increase that to a quarter of a mile that you run every other day of the week. In week three, you go to three quarters of a mile. In week four, you go to a full mile, and so on and so forth and so on until you're able to run a full marathon and are in great physical shape. See, that is a good series of steps for you to take. Now, granted, it's a bit simplified, but this is an illustration not being offered as a training program, okay? However, it does highlight the problem with steps to be taken as applied to everybody. What's the problem? Well, how does this great series of steps help someone get into shape if they have bad knees and can't run? I mean, aren't there other ways that that person who can't run get into good physical shape? Well, yes, of course there are, just not the steps that you're taking. So how does that apply then to learning how to love? Well, one of the most amazing, enriching, and infuriating things I have ever experienced in terms of dealing with God's love is that God deals with each of us as the unique individuals that we are. Meaning that as God deals with each of us as we are, we must then realize that the specifics applied to our lives will not always be the specifics in the lives of others. See, I'm reminded of something Jesus said to Peter concerning how he would be dealing with others. Jesus simply said, what's that to you? You follow me. And it is very interesting to me that all of Jesus' commands and teachings are always given to us on levels that are much deeper than mere physical actions, mere action steps to be taken in order to achieve a given end. Well, for instance, his teaching about being angry with a brother, earning the same judgment as if murder had happened. And how about his teaching that to simply look with somebody, uh, to look at somebody with lustful thoughts is the same as actually committing adultery with them person. And as far as commandments given, well, Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, so also you must love one another. That is about as step specific as he ever gets. So what can we do? Where do we go from here? Is there nothing that can guide us on our way? Well, 
I think that there are two things that we can safely say are actually rock solid steps we can take. You know, much like in the illustration of physical fitness, we could say that there are indeed two rock solid steps that everybody must do. And those being to exercise and eat well. And so too, in learning to love God, there are two things. And these are, one, to ask God for wisdom in learning how to love, for He gives this freely and to all who ask. Second, we need to read the Bible. I mean, if we're going to be asking Him for wisdom, it may just be a good idea to listen what He has to say about it. I know, I know, I, I, I know. Crazy but it just might prove informative. For instance, check out this passage that I stumbled upon in 2 Peter. In short, it says that God has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. And as we learned a couple of videos ago, and I'll link to them somewhere around here, or at least in the description box below, this does involve love. Loving Him and loving others. And the passage doesn't stop there. It also tells us what we need to be doing if we truly have accepted God's gift and are wanting to love. We need to be adding to our faith goodness, to goodness, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control. To self-control, we need to add perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, we need to add brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, we will add love. For if we do this in increasing measure, continually, we will be kept from being unproductive and ineffective in our knowledge of Jesus. Oh, and it says if we don't do these things, we will be nearsighted, and worse than that even, we will be blind. See, if we do these things, we will never fail in our faith. And that fits the gospel message perfectly. We come to Christ by faith. And it is at that point that life begins. Then we can start to learn how to love. So, if we do these things, we will not fail to learn how to love. Oh, and notice too, that these are not mere steps to be taking. They go much deeper than mere physical and action steps to take. See, these touch on the development and the growth of the new person that Christ has transformed us into. See, it's all about the development of character, of us as individuals as we grow in our relationship with God. And as we grow, not only will we not stumble in our faith, we will also be partakers in God's divine nature, which resonates as true in light of John chapter 15 which is the chapter about abiding in and remaining in Christ and His love. If we remain in His love, we will keep His commands. And His command is to love. Huh. Doesn't that make your head spin? Oh, and we're not done yet, for I've also stumbled onto something quite intriguing in the book of Job. Yeah, Job. You know, the Old Testament. Yeah, the Old Testament. Woohoo! See, in this passage, I found God telling Job, Job, to man up in order to have a conversation with him. Now, granted, that is a slight paraphrase, but isn't that rather profound? God telling Job to man up and then we'll talk. It seems that what we need to do is to become grown ups. Isn't that shocking? <laughs> See, as mature adults, we are to seek God's promised wisdom and help for working out the salvation that He has put into us. That is, to work out how to love both Him and our neighbors. See, I find it interesting that in most every other area of our life, we as grown-ups do not need everything explicitly spelled out for us. Indeed. We can get more than just a little annoyed at somebody for doing so for us. For we can, we do, and we even like to connect the dots on our own, filling in the blanks with other things that we have learned. We just do. 
Perhaps God has given us the list in 2 Peter in honor of this. Perhaps as they are pondered and applied, He expects us to connect some dots, to fill in the blanks, and so to learn how to love those who He puts in our path. Perhaps by giving us this list, He is also giving us the wisdom and the help we need in order to do so. What an intriguing thought that is, that He is giving us the wisdom to learn how to love simply, wisely, and well. Well, what do you think? Please tell me in the comments section below. Also, in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced in this video and in the order that I referenced them. That way, you can check me out. Make sure I'm not making any of this up and that I'm not way out in left field. Also, if you like this video, please check that like and the subscribe button, and then make sure to tag that gray notification bell that pops up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. And we now have a podcast version of this video available for you. So if you'd like to take a podcast version of it and listen to it wherever you want to go, you can simply go to simplenotshallow.com and download it there, or subscribe to the Simple Not Shallow podcast through the podcast service of your choice. You know, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, whichever one you like. That way you can listen anywhere, anytime, anyhow, any way that you would like to. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Ooh. And I'll catch you next time.